First of all, I want to thank Deputy McGuinness and the committee. And I took the trouble of reading this report, and I've read many reports since I came in to this stall. And this one has truly horrified me. I heard, and I heard various TDs in the hall make references, including Deputy McGuinness, and I have to say I thought they were off, off their trolley, as we'd say in Galway. I wasn't taking it seriously, even though I had a legal background myself. And what I, I hear that you're open to review and the government is going to review. That review will be absolutely crucial. So for those that might be listening in due course to us, although I'm not sure there are many listening, but in due. So I am described as a politically exposed person, a PEP. My bank account is scrutinized unknowns to me. My deposits are anything when I go in and out and staff are aware of me. I have no problem with any of that. Indeed, I can stand on the high moral ground, which is a dangerous place to stand, and I do it reluctantly. But I have one source of income. It comes straight from the state. It comes with a harp on it. I can't imagine how I could be asked any questions, because you can just Google, and up comes my salary and all of our salaries. It must be the most open and accountable system that we have in relation to what we earn. Mm -hmm. And so my monthly payment goes in, and it's there for everybody to see, and it comes out either by a cash withdrawal or by a cheque. And then I read this report and I find my consternation going back to 1990 following a directive. And let's look at the language being used, and that was followed by the 2010 Act in Ireland. And so I find my consternation that I'm included under the 2010 Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Act 2010. Now, I give out about TDs and parties in terms of their policies, but for any TD to come under this is just unacceptable. I am neither a terrorist, nor do I smuggle or laundry money. And I would stand up for every TD in the Dáil in relation to this. This is awful. And Deputy, um, Deputy McGuinness was looking for the page. It's page 16, actually, is what you were looking for. And your message there was, therefore, your interpretation was, we think it's bad now, but it's going to get worse. And that was in response to the finance official who was before. And she told us, it was a directive, but it would become a regulation, which you've said. That means instantly applicable in Ireland. And she goes on to say that the issue is not just local to Ireland, but all the states are feeling the pain of this. That's nice that somebody is feeling our pain. And the consensus seems to be that in the balance of interest, family members and associates have to be included. Family members and associates. I come back to who defines associates and how extensive is the family members. I can't see it anywhere. And then she says, what, what Deputy McGuinness was looking for, what we are talking about here is going to become the norm. It will be for everyone. It will become the norm for everyone. And she goes on to tell us why. She tells us th that fingers have been so badly burned by various money laundering scandals and collapse of the financial system several years ago that the risk appetite is very low. So now, we're in this group. I had nothing to do with the financial collapse. Most politicians, I would say almost all of them, had nothing to do with the financial collapse. But the very banks that had a major part to pay in the collapse are now supervising our accounts unknown to us, following everything that goes in and out. And in fact, as I understand it, they can outsource that. I'd like you to clarify that. What are the processes in place? Who's monitoring? Who's carrying out that monitoring? What outsourcing has been done? What review has been done up to now? How did it take a committee to ask you to do a review? At what stage does the monitoring stop for me? When the risk assessment started for me, when? When did it finish? Who did that in the bank? When I go in the bank, open and accountable to withdraw money, which official is monitoring me? And I'm using myself on the very limited high moral ground that I'm talking about, which I'm most uncomfortable with, just to illustrate the point. And this report has made six recommendations. I endorse all of them. But when it comes to the review, I would like the committee to have an impact into that, an input into that. And so the, the forward, and you've repeated it, he has repeatedly acknowledged the importance of anti-laundering. 
absolutely acknowledge that and the concerns in relation to that and why. But how ironic is it that the very institutions that led us into the mess in the first place are the ones doing monitoring in not an open and an accountable way. And we know that the percentage, money laundering and terrorist financing, is a significant and costly global threat. The United Nations on drugs and crime estimate that illegal money worth between 2 and 5% of the global GDP, approximately 800 billion dollars is laundered through the world each year. And I think it might be very easy to see what percentage of TD's money is part of that. That would be very easy to see. But what we're doing here is making a presumption that all elected officials are guilty till proven innocent and we don't even know the process. Kafka comes to mind and the various books that I found very difficult to understand as a young student and that I'm more than familiar with now in English and Irish because it makes absolutely sense the Kafkaesque world that's been created here with the presumption that we're guilty till proven innocent. The proposals are changing all of the time to include more and more people and to become automatically uh, implemented in our country. So when I ask now and I try to explain if a councillor comes up to me, are, well, I'm a PEP, are you a PEP? What's a PEP? A politically exposed person. I cannot confirm whether county councillors and city councillors are PEPs. And as the deputy has already said, the discussion, again, how ironic, on local government and the importance of local government. I can tell you, when people hear this, very few people will want to stand up. I'm not going to refer to my own family. Everyone's family are now in the picture. Your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, perhaps your aunts, your uncles, I don't know. I don't know many times I've stood up here and quoted the Irish Council for Civil Liberty and the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission that talk about legislation being specific, being fair, being proportionate, being there to achieve a specific purpose. What is the purpose we're trying to achieve with this? Are we, are we now money launderers? Are we now terrorists supplying finance to terrorist organisations? Because that is the framework. That is extremely dangerous for our democracy that we would be framed like that. And I have stood up repeatedly for openness and accountability. Absolutely monitor what we get, but not in this manner. This is a positively disgraceful. I understand under this very vague legislation, accounts can be closed. Money can be frozen. The councillor, the TD, the family, if there's any suspicion, we don't know by whom because we're not told that, the account. Can you imagine, um, Minister Richmond, a councillor going in and the, the account is frozen, or me going in on Monday and my account is frozen, and nobody, imagine what that does to my reputation. Although we're repeatedly being told by the officials, oh, this has nothing to do with um, uh, defamation or casting aspersions on your character. This is to do with prevention. Prevention of what? Prevention of what? I got a salary as a councillor. It went into a bank account or a, post or a credit union. I get the same now. At some stage, sense has to prevail in relation to this and actually look at what's happening. And what you're doing is denigrating the world of politics for the sins of a few. While the big, we heard Joan Collins earlier, how ironic, that's the third time I've used that word in relation to corporate, the world of corporate power and abuse. Not, nothing being tackled. Absolutely nothing being tackled, but something like this in terms of directives and regulations without proper discussion and with the finance person admitting, oh, the appetite is very low really for risk because things were so bad. The analysis, the analysis of the Irish part, one of it that struck me was the consensus mentality the consensus mentality that everybody had to sing from the same agenda and nobody was going to question. I do not sing from the same agenda as Deputy McGuinness on lots of topics. 
nor with other TDs, but I stand firm with them in relation to this matter. This is absolutely disproportionate, unfair, not achieving its purpose, and a complete absence of data as to who's doing it, for how long, what prosecutions there have been, what convictions there have been, and has it achieved its purpose? Her mother.